respect uh, Dawood, let me go to you with that same question. Do you think this is a significant departure, possibly, in Jordan's policy towards a two-state solution for Israel-Palestine? I think this is a departure from the Jordanian policy. You know, in Jordan, the um, foreign policy is usually uh, the kind of domain of the uh, of the palace and the monarch. And so uh, it's it's. Um, I would say the prime minister's speech or interview is more a, a, a theoretical idea rather than a, a policy decision. You know, uh, Mr. Dr. Rezel is talking more as a as a professor, if you will, of saying of analyzing analysts saying if you don't accept a two-state solution, then you have either is going to be in a apartheid situation or there has to be a one-state solution. So I don't think he was making policy as much as he was trying to uh, send to the Israelis a signal that uh, if they don't go through with the basic minimum that is required for a two-state solution, which is the withdrawal of Israel to the 67 borders, then they will be forced to accept a one-state solution. So I think it's more of a threat to the Israelis than, than a change of policy. But as I said earlier, this is mostly an analytical talk, not a policy decision. Okay, so, so Hassan, it seems that we, we agree that this is not necessarily a policy decision on the part of the Prime Minister of Jordan. But nevertheless, when we're looking at the situation on the ground in the occupied territories, um, is it realistic to actually expect that two states can actually come into being, living side by side, considering um, you know, the illegal Israeli settlements that are strewn across the occupied territories in such a fashion that it really, it's very hard to imagine how two states can be, can be crafted? Well, you know, settlements have, you know, have been always there. I mean, also probably their number um, increase in time. But if there is a will, there would be a 